Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, beautiful people of God. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am thanking God for each and every one of you yet another morning that the Lord has woken us up. And since he woke you up, since you got up, you might as well throw your hands up and give God praise for everything that he's doing. I pray harvest that God promised you and that you take back everything that the devil has stolen from you. I pray that you get it all back, your joy, your peace, your health, your family, whatever it is in Jesus name, it's coming back to you and it's coming back to you double fold. Believe it and receive it. Today we are talking about gain in Christ. Now, pastor made a mistake. A lot, some of you who have your Sunday school book, you probably did notice. I actually skipped over a lesson last week. I taught January 29th lesson last week. So now I'm going to teach, uh, what is this, uh, January 22nd lesson this week. And then we'll be right back on. Don't y'all laugh at me. Don't you judge me. I'll talk about you. But anyway, we get into the word we'll go ahead and we'll pray and then we'll jump straight in lord we thank you for yet another day that you have woke us up god that you have started giving us another day to go after fresh opportunities to do something that we've never done before to go places that we've never been to experience things we've never experienced so god we say thank you because you're worthy. God, thank you for allowing us to come together week after week to learn of your word, to get healthier and stronger as well as physically, God, because your word is literally health to the bones. So God, we give you praise, glory, and honor today. And it is so in Jesus' name. And everyone said together, amen. So to gaining in Jesus Christ. How many of y'all want to gain in Jesus? I'm with some of us have taken some losses in life, but I want to gain in the Lord. I want all I want all that God has for my church. And I want all that God has to be manifested in their life. Because guess what? When I'm blessed, my church is blessed, my family, my friend, anybody connected to me is blessed. And the same goes for them. If your church is blessed, if you're if the parishioners in your church are blessed, it's going to spill out on you. And that's why I love my church, Harvest of Faith, is because the Lord is moving like a mighty wind through that place and is blessing people in great and mighty ways ways and we're going to higher heights this year about that also if you harvest the faith and you watching this do not forget our church meeting is today after our youth service i got some great exciting news for us we're talking about different things our auxiliary but anyway i ain't gonna get into all that so but today we're talking about the apostle paul again and he's warning the philippians about the dangers of distorted religion and he railed against the problem of having confidence in your flesh and having confidence in your knowledge of self versus your knowledge in Christ. And he was concerned about people who trusted their own accomplishments more than they actually trusted God to guide them or the spirit to guide them. They were more concerned with what they had going on, their titles or their degrees or whatever, the, their knowledge. And we see that a lot of times in churches today where we're more caught up in our titles. We're more caught up in the legalistic things of, of the church and, and, and the religious things of the church that we forget that relationship is the most important thing that we have. It's the best thing that we have. I, 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 I don't, I will never put religion or or my own ideology or whatever the case is or methodology over my relationship with God over my relationship with Christ that is the most important thing it's what keeps me breathing keeps me moving keeps favor upon me keeps dangers seen and unseen from taking me out and taking you out you should want its benefits to having a relationship with the Lord. So he was concerned about, you know, people that were, you know, so caught up in what they had and, and being boastful about it. So, and today we see that Paul, with all that he had going on, his and his, and his ability to speak 
um, different language and all of these things. He was impressive. He standard, but especially by his Hebrew qualifications. He understood from personal experience what it meant to have wise religious values, virtues, and achievements, only to discover that it was not the end all be all of life. It didn't matter how much he knew. It didn't matter the education that he had. All that mattered was his hate relationship with Christ, letting him guide you, letting him be in you, dwelling in you, and guiding you. So we're going to be talking a bit here about the Apostle Paul and what he's trying to uh, the Philippians. So I'll read verses 7, chapter 3, 7, Philippians chapter 3. Verses 7 through 9. Amen. Now, here's what it said in the, uh, the King version here. Yes, it says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. Wow. For God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. So if a person had a reason to have confidence in himself and his intellectual abilities. If any person to do that, it was Paul. Because of his education, because of his upbringing, because of who he was connected to in his lineage, the Davidic line, because of who Paul was, if anybody, and that's what he's trying to let them know in the scripture, if anybody had a reason to boast, he's like, it's me. But even I recognize that it's all for nothing if my relationship with Christ is non-existent. So even through all of Paul's rules, which gave him standing in Jewish hierarchy and all of that, he gave it all up when he encountered Christ. He realized that it didn't matter his education. It didn't matter how much he thought he knew. He realized that his relationship with Christ was way more important. And one can only give up that which one has. And one cannot give up which one does not have. So Paul was able to speak with authority concerning the worthlessness of something that, the, that he once highly regarded. He said, my education is worthless if I don't have a relationship with Christ. My abilities, the way I talk, the way I can, can spin words and all of it, it means nothing if my relationship with Christ is non-existent. So Paul told the Philippians about his own heritage and accomplishments. He said, let me give y'all a history of me. Let me give you my, let me give you my re resume. So he gave them history concerning his, his heritage. There were four gains, which he now counted as a loss for Christ's sake. First, he was, he was circumcised on the eighth day, which meant that he was born. Got that? That's the first thing. He, and then, and also he was converted to Judaism. Secondly, he was a pure Hebrew. The Apostle Paul that was that was that was criticizing Christians and and, and 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 persecuting Christians. He was a Hebrew, not of mixed descent, as there were many Palestines that were mixed that day. But he in those days, but he was actually a pure Hebrew. Third, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, which had remained loyal to the Davidic line when the kingdom divided. So Paul had a rich background. Fourth, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. And some of us that have studied the Bible, we understand that that was often used to designate those who had retained the national language. So he understood the language. He was the Hebrew of Hebrews. Though he settled in a Greek city, 
Paul's family continued to speak the Hebrew language. So he settled in a Greek city. He learned the Greek traditions. He learned the Greek laws and he could speak Hebrew and he was a pure Hebrew. Paul was cold <laughs> for lack of, for lack of of a better word, Paul had it going on concerning his expertise of the law. Paul was a Pharisee, so he was an expert at the law. He was part of a strict sect whose life was pursuit was to obey the law in every detail. So he was very detailed. He was very intellectual. He was a great thinker. This is Paul here. Now he's given them. He's given the Philippians his background. He's like, look, if anybody that you're full of yourselves and you shouldn't be, it's me. He said, because not trying to brag, but I'm just trying to inform y'all, I got credential beyond what any of you have. And yet even I understand that it means nothing if my relationship with God, my relationship with Christ is not where it needs to be. He said, when I align myself with Christ, my educate everything that I know, all, all the Holy Spirit does, all Christ does is just enhance and anoint it and make it even more powerful than what it is with just me operating. Paul understood. He said, look, and I also understand that Christ, his knowledge, his power is way stronger than any education that I have. So obviously, Paul was a man of great intellectual ability. Paul came to realize that no legalistic training or adherence could save him or anyone else. His training, he said, that can't get me into heaven. A lot of us are so full of ourselves. We think that it's what we know that's going to get us in what we've studied, what we've accomplished, but what is going to get us into heaven and what is going to keep your relationship with Christ healthy is actually studying his word and getting to know him, letting him lead your life. It's great that everybody, I'm not shunning education at all. Obviously, education is great. You need education. I recommend that anybody who is anybody gets an education because it can help you financially. Lord knows we need it now. Gas prices, eggs are $20. We need money. So education is a great thing. It's a great, it opens doors for you, opportunities, all of these things, but that cannot be the end all be all to your life. It cannot be just money, 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 big house, nice car, and no relationship. At some point, We've got to check ourselves. We've got to look in the mirror and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I know I recognize that it's in you that I live and it's in you that I move and have my being. Paul did give up the things that were considered evil and worthless. He willingly walked away from a treasured lifestyle. Think about that. His relationship with God was far more important than the lifestyle that he was living. He was held at high esteem by his family and his community, and he left it all because he understood that there was a higher calling that he was called to. So what he now counted as a loss or a former state of wickedness, but of strict adherence to the law. That's what it was. So whatever advantages Paul had in his former life, get this, were nothing in the light of salvation that he was now granted through his knowledge of Jesus Christ. Nothing that he had ever done up to that point, nothing he had ever accomplished up to that point compared to him coming into the knowledge of Christ. Think about it. Jesus had all kinds of educated people, all kinds of degreed people around him. But yet it was his anointing, his knowledge, his wisdom that drew them to him and had them gleaning from a man that wasn't, as, that wasn't educated like them, that didn't go to the colleges and the schools and have the training that they had. But yet there was something in him that they needed. Yet there was 
something in him that caused them. You look, feel like you are a person of status. If you feel like as education and you are, have all the knowledge and all, you're not going to follow behind nobody that you feel is lesser than. Let's just be honest. You're not going to follow behind nobody. You're like, you're, you don't even know as much as I do, or you don't even have that. You didn't go to school. Why would I listen to you? But there was something about Jesus that even though he didn't go to the University of Illinois, even though he did not go to the University of Jerusalem, he had what they needed. And they were drawn to him. But what Jesus had, they needed in order to inherit eternal life. And it didn't matter what professions that they were in. So Paul was trying to get everybody to consider, like he did, his former treasures as trash. He said, look, pfft, I'm not worried about what I did then. I'm, I'm talking about now. I'm not worried about what I've accomplished in the past because that means nothing compared to the new life, the new relationship that I now have with Christ. So let's read verses 10 and 11 here. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. See, he wanted something. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. This is what Paul was concerned with. Paul surrendered his legalism, his self-righteousness. He surrendered all of this. And he literally went to another extreme of libertinism. He was trying to liberate folk. He didn't understand freedom from legalism to translate into lawlessness. He didn't want that. So here it is. As it was when he was a Pharisee, righteousness remained his consuming goal. But now he pursued righteousness from God, not self-righteousness. Now he found through faith in Christ, not the self-righteous, but of his previous life. So he said, I'm letting he said, I don't consider myself self-righteous anymore. I'm only righteous through Christ. It is in him that I live, in him that I move, and in him that I have my being. Righteousness, as we all know, no matter how much, no matter how beneficial it can be, righteousness is not a human achievement. I'm going to say that again. Righteousness is not a human achievement. It is the work of God in someone that has the openness of faith to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You got to be open to want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ before you can be made righteous. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, how can you say that you're righteous? That's what the Apostle Paul was saying. Stop being self-righteous. You can't save you. You can't get you into heaven. You will get you in more trouble. You will mess things up more for you than you would if you would just trust God and let him have his way. I hope I'm helping somebody here today with this. Therefore, our righteousness can only come in a nutshell. It can only come through our faith in Christ. And Paul wanted to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He said, all of this other stuff means nothing to me. He said, I want the real power. He said, I want to be able to know that when I die, when I close my eyes, you can't hold me. I want that same resurrection power that Jesus the Christ experienced. I want that same power. You should want that same power. I want to get up. Amen. I want to get up on that great day where death can no longer hold me down. So to know Christ is not just an intellectual understanding of who he is. It is the most intimate with him. Your relationship is all that Christ is concerned with. He's not concerned with how much you know, more than he's concerned with who you know. Because we can even attest to that right here on this Sunday school. Some of us have great jobs, not because of what we know, but because of who we know. Some of us have gotten promotions not because of what we know, <laughs> but because of who we know. 
So therefore, our education, though it's great and excellent tool, it's an excellent weapon to have there are certain things there are certain doors that your education cannot open there are certain doors that only having god's divine favor are going to get you in having the education is just a cherry on top but having that divine favor oh that's the that's the whole ice cream that's what's gonna get you that's what's gonna get you into the door so the closest example that Paul wanted to kind of compare with having a relationship with God was like having a relationship with your wife, somebody or your husband, somebody that you would do anything for, somebody that you trust, somebody that you would go to war for in, in good times and in bad times. That's what having a relationship with Christ really means. Do you want a real relationship with Christ? Are you willing to lay down what you thought you knew? Are you willing to say, Lord, I don't know it all? Are you willing to say, Lord, I don't have it all together? Are you willing to say, yes, Lord, even though I have more degrees than a thermometer, Lord, I still fall short. I know I'm not the only one. Amen, somebody. Every single day. It is a journey. It is a battle to continue to walk, to continue to believe, to continue to not let the devil get the best of you. Every single day, it is a journey. But guess what? If God be for you, he is more than the world against you. Jesus will walk with you every single day. Ha! Huh. He said, put my yoke, take my yoke upon thee, my God. His burden is easy. He'll never put too much on you than you can bear. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, here it is. This important resurrection guarantees that our human bodies have great importance. Mm. Second thing, while we don't have our beginnings in eternity, God shares his eternal, his eternality with us beginning the day of our conversion and third his resurrection blesses us with wonderful joy of his promise to be with us forever i thank god for that promise that the lord will be with me forever and ever he will never leave me he will never forsake me he will always be there until the end of the world that is enough to thank god for knowing that he's with me he's with you I need somebody to know that today. God is in the same place that you last left him. He has not gone anywhere. He's with you. His goodness and his mercy have been following you all the days of your life, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not. It is a privilege to become one with God. Why? Because he sent his son to hang for you and me. And in order to live with Christ, guess what? We must die with him. We can't go back to the cross of Golgotha. Who was victorious there can come to us and allow us to be conformed to his ways. We can't go back to the cross, but we can die to ourselves. We can die to our flesh and become more and more like Christ each and every day. That's all Paul was saying. He said each and every day, instead of you being more self-righteous or becoming more full of yourself, he said, how about you become more righteous and become more full of Christ? How about you understand that it is no longer I who live, but he that lives in me. I'm crucifying myself so that God, so that Jesus can come alive. I'm crucifying my flesh so that my spirit can have can can have the final say so that my spirit I can be led by the spirit and not led by my own selfish desires. That is what it means to be gaining in Christ. You gain so much more when you lose. When you lose your own mindset, when you lose what you think that you wanted, you gain so much more. You don't lose things that God won't replace. You lost 
Count it as joy. Count it as a lesson. God didn't want you to have it. Amen. Guess what? He's going to give you something better. From now on, have the mindset of I'm gaining in Christ. I'm not losing anything. I'm not risking anything. I am gaining in Christ. I'm in love. I'm gaining strength. I'm gaining favor in Christ. Do like the apostle Paul said, understand it's not about us, but it is about Jesus, the Christ. That is our lesson today. I pray that it blesses somebody. I pray that the Lord will keep you in his divine care and that he would cover you and that you would continue to gain each and every day. And it is so in Jesus name. Amen. That was the prayer right there. Receive it in Jesus name. We'll see you next week. And remember, you're going to reap the harvest that God promised you and take back everything that the devil stole. It is so in Jesus name. God bless you.